Hey guys, welcome to the Recon Civil Academy video series. In the previous two videos of Mode Circle, in the first video I discussed the basics of Mode Circle and in the second I discussed the advanced Mode Circle. In this video, I will discuss the numerical based on Mode Circle. If you have not watched my first two video, I request you to watch those two videos so that you can better understand this video. And if you feel that Mode Circle is completely understood by you, then this is the video to solve the example. Whenever a stress analysis question is given to you, it can be solved by two methods. One is the analytical method, which means you will use the formulas and solve the numerical or you can use by drawing the mode circle. In the drawing the mode circle you have another two options one with scale and second is without scale. I, I will discuss both the methods and how to decide whether you need to solve the problem using analytical solution or mode circle. This is most important part. How to decide this? Which method you will follow to solve the question? It depends on the question to question and your thorough knowledge of the subject. So let us do and see how we can decide which method is better. In this I will solve all the numericals using mode circle and tell you that whether it is appropriate to use the mode circle or not. So let us start with the first question. Find the intensity of normal stress, shear stress and resultant stress on a plane the normal of which is inclined 30 degree to the axis of the bar. Find maximum shear stress and draw mode circle. So a bar is given with the axial force of 100 Newton per mm square. You have to find the normal stresses and shear stress on a plane inclined to the 30 degree with the longitudinal axis. I can convert the diagram into my stress element diagram like this. So this is my sigma x, sigma y is 0 and q is 0. So actually the stress element is this but these are zero. Now the angle between the normal to the plane axis and the normal to the plane is 30 degree. So if two lines are having angle theta then their perpendicular will also have angle theta. So this angle is also theta which is 30 degree. I need to draw the mode circle. So what is my coordinate for angle direction? It is 0 comma 0 because sigma y is also 0 and q is also 0. So my coordinate for the vertical plane it is 100 comma 0. So if you see how I can draw the mode circle. I need two planes perpendicular to each other. So the angle is 90 degree. So one is 0 comma 0 and another is 100 comma 0. So the center of the mode circle always lies on the x axis and they are two diametrical opposite point because q is same. I can draw the mode circle. Pardon me for the shape of the circle. So this is my mode circle. Now what is the radius of the mode circle? This is 100 so this is my 50 is the radius. The first question what is maximum shear stress? So maximum shear stress is this and this is 50 because this is the radius. So my answer will be 50 and draw the mode circle. So this is my mode circle. Now the question is you have to find the stresses at 30 degree angle with the horizontal axis. This uh, angle will become 60. If this is 30 then on the mode circle it becomes 60. So you need to draw a line having angle 60 and then this thing clear. You know that this is 50. You can find uh, this value. This will be 50 cos 60 and what will be my total length this much. This is 50 this value plus 50 cos 60. So this is the x coordinate which you solve you will get 75. And what is my y? y will be 50 sin 60. This will be y coordinate. So that will be 43.3. At this plane, at this plane, what is my normal stress? It is 75. And what is my uh, tangential stress? It is 43.3. This will be tensile. So I will put positive. I want to discuss two more points which is not given in this question. The first thing is what is my major principal plane? If somebody asks you what is your major principal plane then my major principal plane is AC which means this. Why? Because shear on this plane is zero. 
and what is the definition of a major and minor principal plane that the shear on the plane will be zero so this is the major principal plane the outside plane is a major principal plane in this question and what is minor principal plane this is my minor principal plane so this is my major principal plane and this is my minor principal plane times external loading can be the major and minor principal planes and principal stresses very important to understand you just remember major principal plane having shear stress zero where air you have shear stress zero is your major and minor principal plane uh, let us take second question uh, find the stresses on a plane for the plane stress as shown given the normal of which is inclined 45 degree so 45 degree clockwise this is important friend thing to my sign convention anti clockwise is positive so he is asking on 45 degree clockwise so i will take care of this just keep in mind this part now the stress element is given to me what is the coordinate for this plane 45 comma 30 what is the coordinate for this plane 120 comma minus 30 shear anti clockwise negative now let us draw the mohr circle so one is 120 by 30 uh, 120 comma minus 30 and another is 45 plus 30 these are the two co points which and diametrically opposite because y is same now taking this as radius draw a circle please pardon me for not drawing it correctly i don't require that to be very correct this plane is which plane this plane is this one and this plane is is it okay this is my major principal stress sigma max and this is my minor principal stress sigma minimum now how to find it there is no solution you have to draw it to the scale using compass protector and scale to correctly draw the circle which consume lot of time for these type of the question it is always advisable to use the analytical solution i cannot tell you by simply drawing a rough sketch of the mohr circle that what is the value of sigma minimum what is the value of sigma maximum and what is the radius of the mohr circle i am helpless for those questions where you have all the uh, three stresses sigma y sigma x and q i will advise you do not follow mohr circle for all other where either q is zero sigma y is zero sigma x is zero then you can you follow the mohr circle roughly for rough drawing do not follow the questions with the mohr circle having all threes given because then you you need a scale protector compass everything to find the values that is the point which i want to discuss every time mohr circle is not a good method to use when i draw it roughly i am helpless now to find sigma maximum sigma minimum i need to draw it by some scale i advise you do not use mohr circle in these type of questions you need to use the analytical solution now since i told you that angle is 45 degree clockwise so what i will do i will put minus 45 degree because my anti clockwise is positive so if you draw it by scale then what you will do you will come this way so this becomes your clockwise and you come how many degrees you will come 90 degree because at center the angle is twice 90 degree you will get the pn and pt which is asked in the question for these questions when you see that all things are given sigma x sigma y q skip the question for mohr circle remember the formula and use the analytical solution that is the best and when i will take analytical solutions i will tell you it is very easy to solve these type of question using analytical which means direct formula i will give you direct formula and you will quickly able to find it i have drawn it to the scale so you see this is the solution but this is good for the semester exam but not for the competitive exam there is a one question i have not written in this i just write down here when mohr circle becomes a point so if you see what are what is my stress condition if there is no stress condition the mohr circle is a point but this is not engineering what i need i need the two points which i am putting and this is the radius okay this is my normal 
Now, if this part and this part both comes here, then more circle will become a point. So, what I need? I need equal stresses on both the x and y plane. So, let us say this is 50, this is 50, this is 50 and this is 50. Then what will happen? No shear. So, what is the coordinate for this? 50 comma 0 and what is the coordinate for this? 50 comma 0. So, if I plot, what I will plot? So, what I plot? 50 comma 0 and this turns the Mohr circle to a point. So, when the Mohr circle will become a point? The Mohr circle will become a point when equal stresses on both the planes, equal and likely stresses on both the planes and shear on both the planes is zero. If these two conditions satisfy, then the Mohr circle will become a point. This is very important, lot of time in the interview and in the examination it has been asked. So please remember and please, this is the given condition. So what is my coordinate? 0 comma 30 and what is my coordinate 0 comma minus 30. So, what is my Mohr circle? I can draw it by rough sketch 0 comma 30 0 comma minus 30. Now, draw it. What are the major principal stress and minor principal stress? This is sigma max, uh, sigma minimum and this is sigma maximum and both value are same. Because this is the radius, this is the center, origin of the graph becomes the center. So, this is r and this is equal to 30. So, this is also 30, this is also 30, this is also 30. This plane is this one, this plane is which plane is this? This plane is this one having stress of plus 30, comma 0 and this plane this plane is this one. So, this plane is in compression and this plane is in tension and both the planes have shear equal to 0. These are my major principal plane and this is also my, you can say this as minor but both are major here because minor becomes major and major is major. <laughs> So, you have to understand this part. Uh, this question is a good question to solve by Mohr circle. You can instantaneously say that uh, the value is uh, same everywhere. Whenever there is a pure shear on a stress element, then inside the stress element, the axial stresses will be of equal magnitude. This is important. So, inside the diagonal members at a 45 degree, inside the element at diagonal part, one diagonal will be in tension with stress 30 and one diagonal will be in the compression with stress 30. If you see, this will move like this approximately. So, this diagonal will stretch and this diagonal will compress. Simple to understand as I shown here. Strain on this plane is Q over 2N and strain on this is also Q over 2N. Right now please remember this part, later I will derive this. But right now please remember this. So this is a very good question to solve by Mohr circle instantaneously. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot of things. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and please write a comment for my, any suggestion which you want to give me. Also, you can WhatsApp me for any query or any doubt which you are facing while watching the video. Thank you. Enjoy Civil Engineering.